Well, the brief was um, very brief, uh, but very accurate and very, and very concise. This was for a brand new faculty of engineering at Leicester. The uh, faculty didn't exist before. And of course, they had advantages in as much as the university had no idea as to what an engineering building should look like. They had no preconception. If you analyze the brief, you find that it was very good in this respect, that it gave a very accurate statement of the bones of the building. And really, that's what an architect requires in the first instance. When I look back on it now, I'm rather amazed that we we managed to build a you know, construction as large as this on so little material. There was only about three sheets of foolscap. These were really the types of accommodation that we, as architects, knew very little about. You know, very, very specialist things like shops for heat engines, hydraulic structures, aerodynamics, and so on. The, the, the problem uh, broke down into two specific parts. The first part, the heavy labs, required north lichen, and the north is situated on the diagonal of the site, and the second requirement of the heavy labs was that the planning of them should be flexible. In other words, the petition should be capable of being moved around from year to year as, as the academic uh, structure uh, changed so the partition should be modified. So we required flexible space. The client required flexible space in the heavy labs. And what we've given him there really is something like a big shed. It's a very expensive shed facing a diagonal north. And that's why we have this rather strange roof which doesn't run at right angles to the plan. The other rooms were rather more specific and we formed them into a much tighter mass. So the front of the building has in it recognizable, inflexible elements like lecture theaters, tutorial rooms. They are fixed, rigid forms, which are really quite incapable of being changed in the future. So the, the design procedure has this sort of schizophrenic quality about it. it. You can see from this site plan the relative proportions of the building. This main mass here is about nine-tenths of the area, and these are the heavy labs. And the lighter rooms, the tower, is about a tenth of the total complex. We managed to meet the brief uh, almost entirely by using up practically all of the site. <coughs> the actual site was at the back of the university, the existing university, which used to be left as lunatic asylum. Um, <coughs> now it's one of the expand expanding universities, but the actual site is on the back, uh, at the back, um, away from the new development, the new campus. And uh, this was an advantage to us in as much as we didn't have to conform visually with the, uh, either the new buildings going up or, of course, the existing old buildings, which were recognized to, to be in no great architectural merit. It's not a very attractive site. It's a sort of backward site, really. However, the site was too small for the building. Uh, this is often the case in England, you know, everything is so overbuilt. That, um, however we designed the building, some of it would have gone up in the form of a tower. We were lucky here because um, there was a requirement in the brief for a water tank, which is ready for carrying out wave test experiments in one of the workshops. Uh, for this enormous water tank to be at, at least 100 feet up in the air. So really we designed the tower part, which is water tank, stuck up in the air, 120 feet. And of course the structure which was necessary to hold that weight of water up 
It's like a whole floor full of water. It is quite strong enough to su support putting underneath intermediary floors of offices and administration. Uh, many parts of the building overhang service roads and have openings underneath. This is so that there can be rapid replacement of uh, machinery and equipment. And it's so heavy, this stuff, you know, dynamos, transformers and things, that uh, you have to get into the building by warehousing methods, not, uh, not staircase or lift. These uh, small windows here to the research laboratories were really a device for uh, getting rapid ventilation. They have things like fume covered, so we devised these windows which uh, cant out from the wall of the building and the air coming against the building is forced up. Well, you flip open the louvers uh, on both sides of the room and you get a fantastic draft occurring even in the height of summer. The two big forms at the bottom of the tower are really the lecture theatres both of which are uh, cantilevers. The, the rake underneath is the, the rake of the seating. Both of them are cantilevered from the tower and stabilized by the weight of the tower on top. In other words, the thrust of the cantilever form is stabilized by the weight of the uh, building on top. If you took a floor off the top, the whole building would collapse. Uh, we have we were very pleased about the materials we were able to use on this building because previously we'd been building in brick and concrete, and uh, that, that was regarded as very traditional and uh, uh, retrogressive. And this building gave us the opportunity of using uh, glass and aluminium and tile, and they, of course, are regarded as very uh, avant-garde uh, 20th century things. So, I I in a sense, the, the, the design of this building I is probably the most advanced thing that uh, we, we've put up. But there is a deception there because I, I think that it isn't essential to, to use the latest material to produce a useful work of architecture. I think uh, the quality, uh, you know, function and proportion and so on and so forth, uh, uh, transcend uh, the choice of uh, surface material. The, there are three particular things that I, I like about the building in, in retrospect. Um, one of them occurs as you walk around it, and the 45 degree roof lights project over the brickwork so that you walk underneath them. These great 10 foot high the bellies of glass overhang the building, and it's rather like an Elizabethan feeling. As you walk down an Elizabethan street, you find the upper story overhang. I think that's rather a nice secondary payoff from our glazing technique. The other thing is a rather nostalgic thing. At the rear of the building, we have steel staircases, which are almost 19th century in their appearance. And I often think that it wouldn't be very surprising to see Brunel or Eiffel, you know, coming down them. There's a very, very famous photograph of Eiffel uh, when the tower was being constructed, but walking down a spiral staircase of very, very similar proportions, you see. The, the, the other thing which I is still pleasing about the building and uh, is that in the stairways, we've, we've stuck very much to the engineering tradition and we used open gridiron treads, which meant, of course, you got these uh, wonderfully exciting uh, views that you get, say, in a ship's boiler house of seeing through three, three floors simultaneously. That, that I, 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 I still find uh, um, you know, very thrilling to look at. <laughs>